<laughs> Poor she's fun. She has to listen to all my wrestling stuff. Oh, wait a second. Hello, folks. Welcome back. I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. I mean, I want you guys to get it. Put you there, actually. There we go. Okay, lower that volume a little bit. Is that the first I can get that? Oh, yeah. The heck was that that fell? The hell? I like so much stuff. I don't know what that was. That's okay. Let's see. Here. Oops, sorry about that, folks. Technical difficulties. Let me lower this volume a little bit. There we go. Or is that better? A little bit more. See, this microphone's good. It might be a little bit too good, though. I'm just so not used to it. Again, look at this beautiful shirt. Bullet Club. Two sweets for everyone. For life. But yes. Wait a second. This is my AEW show. Oh, wow. I'm finally doing stuff on schedule. Um, I don't think anyone said anything to me. Let's see, let's take a look at my notes. Nope. One day, if I ever got monetized, you send me a dollar, you get a signed autograph note page from me. Again, good stuff has to happen, though. Send me a dollar. Yeah. Just, just send me money. But that's okay. I'm here to talk about some AEW wrestling, and I'll tell you what, for the new year, it did not disappoint. It was pretty good. And we start off, uh, this is the New Year's Smash, day one. And as you can tell by the title, there's some shenanigans going on at the end of the show, right? Ah. Yeah. Um, it starts off with the Young Bucks taking on Oh, I'm sorry, the Young Bucks and Christopher Daniels and Kazarian, the Kingdom, they take on Jack Evans and Helico and the two people from Acclaim. I have no idea who they are. At least I'm honest when I say that. Uh, starts off, the Young Bucks, they just start flying. It's just like chaos in the ring. I showed up literally two minutes late, got back from the gym because I took a little nap, got to the gym, said, you know what, uh, it's 7.59, I'll start cooking. Get my dinner ready. And then all of a sudden, I turn the computer. I'm like, whoa. Match starts right away. Uh, it's just chaos in the ring. The Young Bucks, they're just like flying all over the place. Uh, Daniels went for an, an Arabian moonsault. Sabu. Yes. Again, that goes back to my story when I saw Sabu in the mall. He just pointed up like that. Like, like are you? Are you? Well, the story goes... It's like, I was in the, um, yeah, that was ba the Battle Creek Mall when I lived in Kalamazoo. And I was in the food court. It was weird. I kind of got, got some food. I saw this big guy. I'm like, that's a big dude. And then he was in like a tight t-shirt and his arm was all kinds of screwed up. I'm like, big guy, Michigan. Mess up arm. I think I finished my slice of pizza. I'm like, excuse me, sir. Are, are you? And he's like, that was so cool. It's so weird when you see wrestlers out of their, out of the ring. Great guy. Um, yeah, so I was impressed. The fact that Excalibur mentioned the Arabian moonsault. Of course, it's not the Arabian face buster. Only, only Sabu does that. Uh, he also only does the triple flip. I don't know if he can do the triple flip moon, the triple flip moon salt. Again, watching Prime ECW before it got super violent with like Sabu, Rob Van Dam, Jerry Lynn. Um, I still think AJ Styles was there for a short stint too. But who knows, maybe my memory is getting fuzzy. I remember a tag team called the Hate Club in like early WCW. Like, I think I mentioned this. It's like, only because I'm like, wait, I've heard of the Hate Club before. 
I know there's a hate club in CZW. I want to say the original one was in WCW because they would, they would come out. People would boo, boo. He said, oh, shut up. You know you like us, but you know what? We hate you. And then, like, the nasty voice would show up and just beat him up, and the crowd would go bonkers. Or uh, the varsity would, would show up, and it would be, like, they were, like, jobbers. It was, like, a squash jobber team. I think every so often they would pick up a win versus, like, oh, I don't know, like, Mike Powers and and, and Adam Catch or, or, like, two other, like, super local jobbers. So, yeah, but that was pretty cool. Wait, where was I? Oh, yeah. Daniels hit was going for an Arabian moonsault, and very sabuish. Um, and then of course they said, "What plain product placement <sighs> for the big show?" They had the whole apron. Obviously, that show's not doing good when you have to have obvious product placement like that. Remember, the one thing I learned from ESPN: self promotion is the mating call. And yeah, for some reason that always happens. Again, self-promotion is the mating call of the mute button. And if you watch enough ESPN, you'll know exactly where that is. Um, let's see. What happened to this match? Oh, yeah. And then <laughs> the heels eventually take charge in the, of the, when they get back in the ring. And Halico's great. Does an arm breaker. Uh, uh, the hybrid two. Jack Evans, I don't care what they say, Jack Evans is probably the most underutilized talent in all of AEW. The only reason I say that is because he's so good in the ring, especially with Angelico. Um, his days from uh, AAA, uh, CMLL, I, I almost want to say Puerto Rico, a little stint in Japan for, I want to say, New Japan Pro Wrestling. He was in one of their like battle royals. Um, his time in Lucha Underground, he really developed a lot. But uh, they're so good, and they just job on all the time. They do the uh, the double team in the corner, and Helico holds up. Christopher Daniels, Jack Evans comes comes down with an elbow again. He's an amazing ring worker, and he's an amazing talker. He will wrestle a match and do nothing but talk, talk, talk trash the entire time. It makes it entertaining. It makes you in it, it makes you engaged. And that's all you want to be. I want to be entertained and I want to be engaged. You can have a great wrestling match, a great technical wrestling match, but if you're not really engaged, you're like, eh, yep, standing switch, yep, arm bar, ooh, chin lock, ooh, what's that? Headlock takedown? Could be a great technical match, but if you're not engaged, you're not really going to care. Jack Evans actually engages you. That's what I, that's what I like about him then. <laughs> I'm Matt Jackson, Road Warrior Buck. Gets in, it's a hot tag. He does uh, the double northern light suplex, which is terrible. Northern light suplex is a hard move to, to hit normally on one person. You put another body in there. Yeah, it's called the air of believability. He goes, ping, right out the door. A road warrior buck. And then he goes flying all over the place. Um, instead of doing a moonsault on top, it's a big splash to the outside. The Young Bucks, they do the risky business. Um, um, the one guy from McLean kicks out of that. If you're, and I, risky business is more of the signature move. But still, if you're going to be doing a big move like that, you have to get a pinfall off of that. You just can't have people kick out of all your signatures and then say, oh yeah, watch this. Uh, then there's a, uh, the power bomb and, into the double kick in the corner of the Young Bucks. Uh, Jack Evans, he did, I, I never saw this before, he did like a backslide clutch. I'll tell you what, bravo Jack Evans, never saw that before. You have made me even more interested and you will make me sing your praises more so and more so all the time. If you're going to do something new and innovative in the ring, I will show my appreciation for it. Uh, Nick Jackson, um... He tried a uh, tried a Meltzer driver. It wasn't going to happen. And then Christopher Daniels, he uh, that didn't happen. He went to the outside. And then Christopher Daniels hit the best Meltzer driver ever. Uh, so the Young Bucks, 
Daniels and Kazarian uh, SCU. That's right. They're not the Kingdom anymore. They're SCU. Their Kingdom's different. I'm sorry. That's the Miracle, Mike Bennett, and a few others. But yeah, um, the Young Bucks and SCU, they win. Again, too many kickoffs is of too many big moves. And it just might be my taste, but... You know, uh, it's a che it's still a cheeseburger match. Then we have John Moxley cutting a promo. He'll he'll get his belt back. Um, Dash is backstage with Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. Miro Miro comes out. Miro has definitely been been buying clothes online at Dress Silly. So I'll t or, um, oh, what's that other store? I always see all the time advertised on Facebook. It might be dressed silly, who knows? But he came out the most ridiculous looking outfit. It was a jungle inspired workout shirt and jungle short, like matching jungle inspired long sleeve t shirt and shorts. Uh, Kip Sabian was there. And oh my goodness, Penelope Ford. I almost thought she, I almost thought she was just wearing underwear. Wait, I think I think that is just underwear, isn't it? Ladies, correct me. Is the course if, if you're just wearing a corset, does that mean you're just wearing underwear? I don't know. I just don't look like she was wearing like underwear, and like some stripperish looking top over top. And the only reason she had on underwear is because if she wore what she was wearing up top. And nothing underneath. TNT would have would have, definitely have to put that black bar of family friendliness across the screen. Uh, and then the next match was John Hagar versus Wardlow. This was actually, I was actually shocked at how good this was, and I gave this probably a higher rating than it probably should have. I was, I was actually that impressed. I think it impressed a lot of people. They tie up very classic collar elbow tie up to begin the match. I always appreciate that. Very technical match. It started off kind of a shoot collegiate wrestling match. That's good. If you're going to have two big guys go at it, um, you can go one of two ways. This was actually the right way to do it. It showcased both the wrestling skills. Um, it also showcased them as big hosses. A couple double clotheslines. Both no sold it. Double shoulder tackles. Both no sold it. It's good. It's the way it should be. If you're gonna have two big guys, are gonna try and tackle each other, do the big guy stuff. It makes sense where it doesn't work against each other. Again, you put um, Wardlow in the, the their the ring versus Marco Stunt. Marco Stunt should be bumping crazy. These two should not be bumping like that, and they weren't. So it was good. It was believable. It felt like a it felt like a wrestling match. It felt like a good pro wrestling match. It wasn't. Overly crazy. Um, eventually did break down to a slug fest, And that's good because now you're going to see, okay, we, we've tried to do the technical stuff. We've matched each other technically. We're both the same size. We're not going to just overpower each other. Now it's time for the slug fest. So that was good. Um, Jake Hagar eventually, when they get back in the ring, Jake, Jake Hagar takes Wardlow corner to corner. That was really good. The head and arm... Um, did a little bit more back and forth. Wardlow uh, tried to go for the F10 early. JKR got out of that. Uh, JKR put Wardlow, and this was probably the mistake, and this was a, uh, this didn't make sense, but at least you can see it. It almost looked like Jake Hagar was going for a head and arm suplex because he had him in, in the arm triangle up at the top rope. Uh, Wardlow just shoved him down because Wardlow was on the outside. He shoved him down. Jake Hagar's head bounced off the ring. That was enough. For Wardlow to get back in the ring, pick him up for the F10 because JKR was still a bit woozy. Hit the F10. It made sense. One of these guys had to win. One of these guys had to lose. But then the cool thing was there was a fist bump at the end. So at least there was mutual respect. All is well with the inner circle. I'll tell you what. I was impressed by this match. Uh, Wardlow in the past has seemed really green. I've seen him a lot in Battle Royals before. Jake Hagar looks kind of sloppy sometimes. I, for this match, I don't know if there's some chemistry there or they actually work things out a lot. And that fist bump at the end, the inner circle came together. And fist bump. Boom! 
goes to dynamite. So that was really cool to see. I'll tell you what, this was actually, a, I thought it was a surf and turf match. Then the Hardy Party's there. They signed some contracts. Uh, Snoop Dogg was there. Yeah, this will be interesting. Because we all know Snoop Dogg is the uncle of Sasha Banks. Vince tends to be very petty about things like this. It'll be interesting to see what, if anything, happens to Sasha Banks on Friday. Who knows? It might be nothing. I'm sure Vince is like, ah, oh, we got to change Sasha's theme or something ridiculous. Then we had the weigh-ins for the uh, TNT, uh, the Dynamite Championship or the TNT Championship. They changed the belt. So that's good. They, they got rid of the red strap. Uh, that's okay. They put on a black strap. The black strap actually looks pretty good. I'll, I'll give it that much. I did like the originality of seeing the red strap. Um... I think if, I don't know, black just seems more official like a championship belt. If it was, like a, I don't know, what belt color would I make it? I'd probably make it, I mean, it makes sense. Have, black goes with everything. The red looked kind of good. It looked different. Like they have like the four side plates now. It looks more, it looks more official, I guess, is what I'm saying. Uh, Brian Cage gets on the scale for the weigh-ins, 270 pounds. And that, folks, is all muscle. Darby Allen got in supposedly at 170 pounds. No. No. Don't lie to me. Boo! Darby Allen's not 30 pounds short of 200. If they said he was 150 or 145, yeah, I could say that. Darby out again, he had all his clothes on too, so, I don't know. Shirt, shoes, jacket, belt. Maybe, maybe, maybe fully clothed 150, 170 pounds. I still think... Darby Allen's 150 pounds soaking wet in hockey gear, though. He just doesn't look it for whatever reason. Um, Taz is great at talking. Darby takes the mic. And then all of a sudden you thought it was going to be a fist of cups. And then Sting shows up and it snows in Jacksonville again. I'm sure, like, anyone who ever, <laughs> if anyone ever saw snow before, it actually has snowed in Jacksonville a few times. I remember one year it snowed. I think I'm like, what's this white stuff falling down from the sky? I'm like, oh, that's snow. I know sometimes sometimes we get ash fall in Jacksonville. That's a whole different stuff. But yeah. And um, then MJF talks to Hagar. Hey, you had a good match. It's, it's good to see you're still a part of the team. Boom, goes to Dynamite. Now I'm done. Uh, Dress Express, we're talking. They're going to face FTR next week. Then our next match, we have Cody Rhodes taking on Matt Sidel. And, oh, please, Matt Sedell has to get it together somehow. Um, I, I don't know if it's ring rust. I don't know if it was just the, the weather. Uh, Matt starts off boshy that the top rope, whatever he does off that top rope, he has to really figure it out because he is not good off that top rope and he is not of the weight division or the size not to be doing top rope stuff. If you're going to be that small, or, or at least that's smaller, and, I'll say relatively small. He's still probably, um, even though Darby Allen's 170 pounds, he can't see any muscle on him. At least with Matt Sedell, you can actually see muscle definition. So I'll give Matt Sedell the, the uh, benefit of the doubt and say, yeah, nah, it's 210, 220. Fairly well muscled out though. Just short, but... If you're going to have that body type, you better be able to do something off the top rope and not, not screw it up all the time. Once, eh, okay, the ropes got sweaty, something was on the ropes, you slipped. This is becoming a thing now. Uh, AJ Styles played off the best, but that's AJ Styles. Matt Sedell, not AJ Styles. It's AJ Styles. It's Bullet Club for life. 
Um, you did hit a Meteora on Cody. I'm sure that's another slap in the face to Vince. Because that's also Sasha Banks' move. So, AEW stole Snoop Dogg. They stole the Meteora. Um, yeah. Then he went for a splash and it was a float over. Um, Cody Rhodes puts him into the uh, Scorpion Deathlock, the figure nine. Standing, uh, no, not the standing figure four, the figure nine. The sharpshooter, whatever you want to call it. Scorpion Deathlock, figure nine. Um, sharpshooter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, then Cody and hits a big knee. And then he starts to taunt Matt Siddell by doing his push-ups. Uh, Siddell hit a step up in Siguri. Then there was some yay boo time. Cody, Cody hit a reverse superplex. That was good. However, he missed the moonsault. That's not good. Again, Siddell needs to have a smoother... Like the shooting star press, he looks so tentative up there. He, And, and that's one of those... It's, it's one of those yip things. And there's no other way to describe it, but I know with golfers and NFL kickers, you get the yips, and then you just begin to doubt yourself, and then you're trying to figure out, okay, I'm here, I'm here. You try, you, you, you overanalyze every little thing because you realize, okay, I've had the yips. How do I fix this? Matt Siddell has the yips, I think, when he's going up to that top row because he took a long time. Like he really paid it. <laughs> And it was as painful to see how much attention he paid to his foot placement and getting just set up. There's enough time. Uh, he went for a splash. Uh, Cody uh, brought the knees up. Yeah, he went for a shooting star press. Uh, Cody brought. Uh, he ate the knees. Then Cody hit a scorpion death drop. That was pretty cool. Uh, Matt Siddell hit, hit a tilt a whirl, cross face. He he tried at least. Then they both go over the top. Cody hit a destroyer kick, and again Matt Siddell hit a very very unsmooth, awkward, twisting hurricanrana. You could almost see, again the thought process, where. And this is the difference between a professional and an amateur. I know he's a professional wrestler. Professionals do things so they don't make mistakes. So they don't get it wrong. Amateurs, a, professionals practice not to get it wrong. Amateurs practice to get it right. It looks like he's still in an amateur stage where he's going literally through all the steps. Okay. Step one, get up on his shoulders. Okay. I'm there. Step two, I have to pivot around his head. So I have to lift, I was like lift, lift legs up, twist on shoulders, reverse my position. Okay. Step three, I have to lean back, cross my ankles, and and ho and kind of squeeze my squeeze my legs together to hold them by the head. And and Cody just went along with it. He realized it's like okay, this is what he's trying to do. And I think even for Cody, it might have been a little bit frustrating. You can say okay, he's doing this literally step by step. The way you do it when you first learn, okay, up, twist, back squeeze go instead of being it goes it's one two three four five instead of going like that it's just a very herky jerky movement of it and I, it just didn't look smooth uh cody eventually had two crossroads he's like yeah the, the first one didn't look too good we'll get the second one that was okay um uh, it was a ham sandwich, though. It was rough to watch. Well, Matt get did have a good lightning strike. That was that looked that looked crisp. That looked something like he could do in his sleep. Again, it's, it's probably just a case of the yips. Who knows? Uh, Serpentico and Luther they 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 get in the ring. They beat up Cody. Sadal tries to make the save. Snoop hits a splash, and, and Snoop Dogg has no business doing a splash. That looked absolutely awful. You figure he could pick up something from Sasha Banks. Yeah, Snoop Dogg. Uh, that. He wanted to go up to the top rope. 
If you're going to go up to the top rope, you got to man up. He did not man up. Uh, then we have... Karushita versus Abaddon. This match was not good for a variety of reasons. One, uh, Abaddon comes to the ring. She looks terrifying, by the way. She looks like a character from like Silent Hill, the video game series, or something out of Resident Evil, which is good, but it's just terrifying. Like the one eye, the way it's so red. I don't even know what she does. And I've seen pictures of her as a normal woman. She's amazingly cute. And then she becomes Abaddon. And you're like, ah. Ugh. Oh, which is good. It's probably the reaction she wants. Again, no one's going to pick her out of the mall and say, hey, are you Abaddon? Oh, it looks like she has like pink eye and one eye. Um, she has a tummy, which is which I'm okay with. Because at least she's like natural. She's a natural woman, at least. I'll give her that much. I mean, she's natural looking. She's not She's not Britt Baker skinny, at least. Oh, yeah. And I'm so not looking forward to the waiting room. No. Britt, no. No. Uh, Hikaru Shida comes out. I uh, just hits her. Wow. Right over the head with the Singapore cane of hers. Abandon falls down. Then sits straight up. Undertaker style. Abandon is the female version of Mankind and Undertaker rolled into one. Best way to put it. Uh, Abaddon then just kind of beats up Sheeta. Again, let's sit up. Um, she does just such forearm shots to Sheeta, beats her up. She is absolutely terrified. Um, she tries biting Sheeta, which I can understand. Bushwhackers used to bite people all the time. Makes sense. However, then she drags Sheeta under the ring. The referee tried to get him out. And you could tell it was fake blood. It was faker than fake blood. It was all over the neck. Listen, if anyone's going to bite you in the neck, listen. I have this little thing here. This thing's a pain in the ass. It's been something I got and I'm, I'm it's actually getting better. But... Still, it's a pretty major gash on the neck, and, and you can tell. Like, oh yeah, look at the gash on her neck. It's like, what gash on her neck? It's like she got, looks like she freaking ran her fingernails against her neck. My cat scratches deeper than that. And you don't see my little kitty cat. Look at, look at, look at her there. Oh, so cute. I'll keep her fuzzy head in the frame too. Move over a little bit. There we go. So, again, you can see the door of wrestling. <laughs> and then, right, there's the, the cat head. Um, but, yeah, so then they go under the ring. There's fake blood. And the reason why I know it's fake blood, it is way too glossy to be real blood. And... On Hikaru Shida's neck, it was way too glossy as well. Also, during the match, it wiped off. If you're going to get bit in the neck, or if you're going to do the blade job, you can tell because the blood does not easily wipe away. It's it's It, quag it, it coagulates... When it coagulates, it actually changes color. Like, you can tell, like, someone's been bleeding. Because, again, they cut themselves. It'll be like a nice, I hate to describe it this way, but it's like a nice bright red. And then over time, it kind of gets brown. This liquid stayed the same color throughout the entire time. Does not happen with real blood. Again, it looked too glossy. I think they used, um... Colored, what's the story? I, I forget if they used, and Carrie, I forget if they used pig's blood or if it was colored corn syrup. Because colored corn syrup will stick, but it doesn't really lose, it doesn't fade. So it looks 
the closest thing to fake blood, but it's not, and it, it just seems so fake, though. And you're, you see that, you're like, really? I mean, no. They did this angle with Shannon Baser biting the neck of um, Becky Lynch. That was weird then, too. Ugh. Um, I mean, if you're going to bite anyone, do like the bushwhacker thing. Like, bite them right here or like bite, bite them on the ear. Or like the John Moxley pinch the skin together and, and bite the head of, um, oh, what's his face? For the, for the U.S. title. No, his name. Um, he does pulp friction too. I can't think of his name. Oh, it'll come to me later. He's obviously not a member of Bullet Club, though. So yeah, um, Abandon's very strike heavy. Very very little wrestling moves. He has a Bray Wyatt uh, reverse Spider Crab walk. Yeah. So now Abandon's become Mankind, Bray Wyatt, and Undertaker with a little bit of Rosemary face paint all in one. Again, putting too much in there. She did one with like, with like uh, just a big knee strike. If that's all it took to be Abandoned, yeah, I'm not impressed. Um, you know what? I upgraded one match. Therefore... For cosmic balance. Um, this match is going to be done great. This match was a piece of toast. Then there was an Anna Jay and Ty Conti promo. Um, Ty Conti is going to face Sarah Deeb for the NAW Women's Championship. I'm fine with that. Ty Conti had a really good showing in the last match I saw her in, so... Yeah, can't 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 go bad there. Then in the main event of the evening, we have Kenny Omega taking on Ray Phoenix. Wait a second, did I have the wrong shirt on? Oh no, wait, that's right. This isn't AAA. This isn't CMLL. This isn't Impact. This is AEW. AEW. So I'm like, wait a second. This is not Triple Mania. Um, a very technical match to start off. Felix hit uh, Ray Phoenix hit the. Or a Karana, Kenny Omega, the swing DDT, uh, Ray Phoenix counters that. Then they have a trade of kicks. Uh, they mentioned New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I know on the Discord group, we were mentioning <laughs> there was the, the images of, of Kota Ibushi saying, Kenny, you got soft. Kenny, you're only taking this many neck drops. Kenny, that American style's made you weak. So yeah, so again, he mentions... Uh, the New Japan, I mentioned a little bit about Kota Ibushi. Very, very, very quick blurb there about Kota Ibushi, how he won the IWGP belt from Jay White. It was, it's always interesting when other wrestling promotions, obviously AEW is more, more free and loose. Um, remember Chris Jericho didn't mention, oh, that's Eric Rowan from, from formerly the Bludgeon Brothers. That actually sounded natural. I'm like, that was my first reaction. That's Eric Rowan from the Bludgeon Brothers and the Wyatt family. So, it's, it's a very... Chris Jericho on commentary has a much more natural reaction to it, which actually makes commentary a lot better. Uh, he, he's, he's perfect for the commentary booth. He's like the Jesse the Body Ventura, the uh, Jer, um, Macho Man Randy Savage on commentary. Uh, to certain regards, Jerry the King Lawler on commentary. He has all this wrestling knowledge. He's been there, done that. He, can actually, he actually knows stuff. Again, uh, Michael Cole and Jerry the King Lawler, they had an amazing relationship because every so often Michael Cole could actually make Jerry the King Lawler talk about wrestling. He, he, could, he, could, he could take him out from the gutter a little bit and he could say, well, Jerry, what about this in, in your time as a wrestler? And Jerry the King Lawler would tell us a story and how it relates to the match in the ring. Again, Jerry could do that a, bit, a little bit with him. JR, <laughs> JR probably, probably poked and prodded. Say, God damn, Jerry, you're... You're, you're a deranged man. like, puppies! So, yeah. But, again, Michael Cole and Jerry the King Law, they were a great tandem tech. They were a great tandem nuts pair. You really have the straight man. You have you have the king who's who's a little a little bit lecherous. Every so often, though, there would be that, that golden moment 
Michael Cole would say something and, and say, well, Jerry, what about your experiences in that? And you could tell you could tell Jerry the King Lawler appreciate that. He'd probably go off a little bit of the script. Again, I think Vince, again, Jerry the King Lawler has been wrestling forever. I'm sure, sure Vince is not going to yell at him exactly for that. He probably yelled at Cole a few times. Why are you getting the king off topic? He's great at talking. But now don't, don't, don't talk about that. Stick to the script, Michael Cole. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I thought it was, I don't care. But yeah. So again, it's really good to see Chris Jericho do that. It just it makes it more, sound more natural. Then they go wrestling. And then Wait, back to the action. Then they go wrestling to the outside. Has a snapdragon suplex on the outside again. It's, it's, it's devolving into that New Japan... Um, how many times can I drop you on your head and neck area? Again, Kota Bushi's like, Kenny, you wuss. Do you know how many neck and head shots I took? I took a few nights ago. Loser. Wuss. Puss. Uh, you know, Kota Bushi's thinking that. Or at least we were in Discord with the Kota Bushi emoji. Uh, then was it uh, the backdrop onto the... Like sixth hardest part of the of the wrestling ring, the apron, and then the backdrop onto the bicycle rack, which I'll be honest, it's metal, so I know it's harder than than the, than the ring apron. So yeah, bicycle racks probably. Oh, we have steel posts, the the real turnbuckle bolts, metal steps. Probably the fourth hardest part of the ring are probably the bicycle racks. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, actually, probably the fourth hardest part are the under struts for the ring itself. So yeah, bicycle racks, fifth hardest part of the ring. We go into that. Uh, back in the ring, it's a trade of chops. Phoenix, a flying headbutt. Again, Kenny Mega's kind of toying with him. Not a good idea. <laughs> Phoenix hit like a running cannonball through the ropes to the outside. That was amazing to see. Uh, again, the way Phoenix can jump from rope to rope. I'd kill myself. Again, this is the opposite of Matt Sedell, whereas Matt Sedell has the yips doing things. Ray, Ray, with Ray Phoenix, it's like second nature. He can, he can do all these jumps. He knows exactly where to go. He has full confidence in himself. He has full confidence of where those ropes are going to be and the reaction those ropes are going to have to where Matt Sedell's like... Is this going to work? So again, there's a total, complete opposite. I, I just think it's a case of the yips. I, I don't know. Let's see here. Yeah, Phoenix with the... Step up in Sagiri. Again, outside. The outside in cutter. That's so good. Again, the frog splash. However, he does land on the knees of Kenny Omega... This is a setup then. Kenny Omega, it's a catch tiger driver. That was amazing looking. Uh, v trigger, then one wing angel. Kenny Omega wins. I'll tell you what, this was. I can't say it's a flaming yawn match, only because it was predictable. It was that one. Uh, this is like. I don't know. This is definitely a surf and turf match, though. And then, blah, 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 blah. See here. So actually, the end of this match was amazing. And let's see here. Let's see how well I can set this up. If I can set this up at, at all. Let's see here. Because then as Kenny Omega goes over, I'm going to move the mic. I'm going to lean in a little bit. Oh, look at that amazing Christmas gift, too. Um, so I'm going to move this over a little bit. So you can catch a little volume. Let's see, maybe that's a good spot. But, yep, so let's see here. So all of a sudden, Kenny Omega starts to beat up uh, Ray Phoenix. We don't know why. And then and then all of a sudden, let's, let's see here. Um, let me find this. And all of a sudden, you like almost hear this. Like, who cares about milk? Oh, 
Oh! Full oh, club! Four! Yes. Yes, yes! Too sweet! <laughs> Carl, Carl Anderson, Anderson and Luke Gallows show, show up! The Impact the Tag, Tag Team, team Champions. Champions! And then, and then you know what's on. You know, it's just the beating went down. went down. After that, After that the, the Young Bucks young showed, up. showed up. Oh, wait a oh, second. Wait a second. They turned on uh, Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian try to make the save. They turn on them. Um, other wrestlers try to get in the ring. Uh, Pillman Jr. came in. Some mask guy came in the ring. I don't know, the uh, other varsity blues blonde guy came in the ring. Um, the Young Bucks turn on them. It was a too sweet moment. Just too sweet. And then they even put all all the two sweets in the ring. Oh wow. That's what it is. Cause you're too sweet for life. Of course you have the machine gunner. That was an amazing ending. And that was, I don't let this music play. Yeah, I don't let that music play too. That sounds so cool. So yes, that was an amazing end to a too sweet show of AEW. You have an impact invasion of AEW. People were shocked. As, as the people from New Japan, they might as well just say, Bullet, 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 Bullet Club. Four. La. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Matungo. He's running through the names. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, too sweet for life. The, like the real rock and roller. Too sweet.